Hillbrook Insane Asylum Patient File Update Entry by Dr. Quinton Quartermain Patient number 200, Philip DeWitt, aka Ghost Writer White male, age 34, black hair, green eyes, 5'9", 182 pounds Patient suffers from a combination of intermittent explosive disorder and histrionic personality disorder of the jealous type. Oh, so clinical doctor. Would it kill you to be more oomph once in a while? Probably not, but I'm still not taking the risk. So, Philip, how have you been since our last session? Oh, so marvellous. I've been working on a new script lately. There's been so much progress. It won't be long until the world bears witness to my latest, greatest masterpiece. And to simply think, there was once a time I thought the perfection that was Hillbrook the Musical couldn't be beaten. But once again, <laughs> my creative genius has done the impossible. Grafting a tale of Romance, betrayal, and heroism, and the other subject matter no one but the glorious Philip DeWitt would dare bring to the world of musicals. Necrophilia. Good lord. <clears throat> uh, about that, Philip, I don't suppose you took those reviews I gave you of your last musical into account when writing this one? Bah, reviews? Other poppycock, all just slandered in an attempt to sully my good name. It is a sad state the world is in, where so many once reputable sources have scuffed to corruption, now only serving as the tools of those at the top in order to bury any that might threaten their struggle hold on their industry. Oh yeah, I mean, it's totally possible that a bunch of theatre elitists were willing to pay off The Post, The Times, The Daily Beacon, The Watcher, The Insider, The Moon, The DB, Ebony's Eye, Liberator News, Indie Theatre Monthly, Ten Cents, and the Haley School of Arts newspaper to give out fake negative reviews because they felt threatened by one man's musical. Just the unfortunate reality we must live in. That was sarcasm, Philip. As a writer, you should be able to recognize that. See, this is what I want to discuss with you today, Philip. How you respond to criticism. Now, before you say anything, I do understand that accepting criticism isn't easy. No one likes to admit when something they've spent time and effort creating is in some way flawed. It can be hurtful, demoralizing but it is an important skill for all creators to have. What? To just accept the insults of those shriveling fools? To indulge their petty, jealous feelings? Doctor, if you truly know me, you know I don't back down. I do not compromise where lesser men crumble. I stand strong. And if you ever listen to me, Philip, you might actually get what I've been trying to teach you for the last six years. I will accept. Sometimes a person gives a bad review because they just want to laugh at someone else's expense. It happens. But I can guarantee you right now, not everyone is like that. In fact, the vast majority aren't. They are to me. It's always about me. Other writers, they, they get their chance, their moment to shine, but not me, never me. It is how it has always been, ever since I was a child. I don't know what I did that grandered such unfair treatment, such unrelenting hatred. But whatever the reason, I am the one who must be forever denied, it would seem. You know, you go on and on about them, about they, but who exactly are they? I told you already, those who are at the top, they're rich and influential, and that is certainly not me. 
It should be me, but it's not! I meant, who are they specifically? What are their names, for a start? Oh... Uh... Well... There was Hatterton, and there was also... Uh... Hmm. uh oh boy. And there it is. See, Philip, you can't name these conspirators because they don't exist. They aren't real. Nobody's out to sabotage your career. This is just how it turned out. Are you insinuating that my writing, my writing, is not good enough? Yes, which is why, for my own safety, you've been tied to your chair. Now, Philip, the fact is, We've all believed in this conspiracy theory, at least once. All of us. But you just said- I don't mean it like that. I mean... Look, we've all faced a time in our lives when things just don't seem to go our way. But despite our best efforts, we can't seem to... win. And we don't know why. There's no rational reason for why we keep failing. After a while, you can't help but wonder what if, just maybe, it's all intentional? We want someone to blame. We want an outlet for our frustrations. We want an enemy. Suddenly, all our failings, all our weaknesses, they have an explanation. Someone's out to get us. The guy who cost you your job, that passenger who took your seat on the bus, we don't know why they're doing this, but that one action? It's as good an excuse as any to believe they're behind it all. Were you bullied at all during school, Philip? Yes, Doctor. I was bullied at school. Is that what you want to hear? And was that bully part of them at some point? What other explanation is there? What is the cause? What is it that continues to harm me so? Simple. There isn't one. There's no grand reveal waiting to happen. No man behind the curtain. It's just... life. Life's not fair, Philip. But it's not unfair, either. It doesn't care whether you win or lose, whether you're talented or talentless. Life is just that. Life. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But getting mad over it, wallowing in your own self-pity, stagnating, it doesn't help. I've learned that much. What? Oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> the choice is yours, Philip. You can keep on blaming the world for all your troubles, or you can take the criticism, use it, improve your craft, and finally start moving forward. What do you say? No, no. They got to you. That's what it is. I mean, it would be easy. You blame me for what happened to your practice, even though that was totally Addington's fault. Yes, that was Addington's fault. The fallen doctor desperately in need of vengeance. Oh, that's a good idea. Might use that somewhere, but yes, you're just another cog in that machine. Oh, gosh. Has Hillbrook fallen as well? Has this tremendous trove of terrors tumbled to their shrinery? Have I lost my fortune of inspiration? No. Wait, I can use this. Yes, I will finally expose them for what they are through this very uh, asylum. They think it to be another feather in their hat, another shovel with which to bury me. But they will soon find their new found tool turned against them. I must get to work straight away. Who could play the lead? Can that Mr. Novelty act? <laughs> Accidental pun. I'll work in that. Oh, Oxifer. 
Mm. Well, well it was worth one last shot. I mean, Goodbye, Philip. If all goes well, well you won't be hearing from me again for quite some time. Then in End recording. Empire. And then there's the matter of... Uh, hey, are you listening to me?